All right, everybody. Welcome back to uh, another battle featuring medieval Eastern Europe. We don't see a lot of these. Uh, Western Europe kind of dominates killing each other off in the medieval era, uh, especially in the early medieval period between the 6th and 10th centuries where a lot of uh, conflict would happen in Central and Western Europe. But over in Eastern Europe, we do see some stuff going on. Uh, we're coming at you with the Battle of Silistra, part of Sviatoslav's invasion of Bulgaria. A battle which would see 60,000 troops from the Kievan Rus invade Bulgaria. Uh, but uh, most historians cite the location of this battle as present-day Romania. Uh, going up against a Bulgarian force of 30,000. Uh, named the Battle of Silistra uh, because it took place outside of, I believe, a fortress, but a, the settlement of Silistra. Now, while the Russians were able to defeat the numerically inferior uh, Hungarians in the field, they unfortunately were not able to capture Silestra. But they did capture other major fortresses in Bulgarian territory, and combined with Byzantine efforts to get revenge on some of their previous losses to the Bulgarians, managed to force a stalemate and eventually a peace between the Kievan Rus and the Bulgarians, ending the conflict in favor of the Kievan Rus, as well as the Byzantines, uh, and uh, really stemming the tide of Bulgarian expansion. Now, my numerically superior force is doing a pretty good job of crushing the forward forces of the Bulgarians, as it looks like all their troops are retreating. They do have some cavalry trying to hold the ground. I think this is the commander's cavalry unit here. Commander for the Russian, or I should say the Kievan Rus, not exactly Russians yet, but uh, Prince Sviatoslav. And um, I, I'm not sure who the commander for the Bulgarians was. Uh, so I'm going to leave that as unknown in the commentary. Um, it looks like uh, whoever that commander is, <clears throat> he's trying to ride around the battlefield to buy his troops time to maybe fall back into Celestia to defend it against uh, Kievan Rus troops out here. But my own cavalry sweeping in under the command of General Prince Sviatoslav. Oh! Looks like General. under Sviatoslav's watch, we've captured the Bulgarian commander. Uh, it also Victory looks like this battle is just about over as most of the Bulgarians are in retreat. We see it. And there we go. And it looks like a full retreat for the Bulgarians is underway as our troops run down, routing. Warriors. Uh, now, up until this point for our European battles, uh, it's a good thing to point out. I've been predominantly counting any infantry as militia. A couple of reasons. A lot of these battles appear to have pretty decently sized armies. You know, uh, tens of thousands of troops. And during this period, there wasn't really a... a like standing armies in Europe, with the exception of uh, the Byzantine Empire. Big armies were mostly militias, uh, even among the Nordic, uh, early medieval Nordic peoples that we often call the Vikings. As skilled as they were in battle, they were pretty much militia. Even though they had experience in battle, they were mostly farmers and fishers and, uh, you know, potters and wood carvers, all kinds of uh, everyday civilian jobs that, when needed, could fulfill a military obligation like going on raids uh, or defending the homelands. So I haven't really included any big uh, regular armies yet, but we will see that as we enter the High Middle Ages, which is 
frequently cited as uh, about the 10th to the, I think, 11th century, uh, maybe 12th century. And then uh, the later third of the medieval era would be the late Middle Ages. And that's really when we see professionally trained standing armies really take to the field of big numbers. Uh, but for now, militia. Uh, but that doesn't mean they're bad at what they do. It just means they're not, uh, not exactly pros, so to say. But it does look like we are about out of time as we run down the last of these uh, routed Bulgarian troops. Cavalry swooping in just to help out the infantry that are giving chase. Prince Sviatoslav capturing some prisoners out there. Um, I did this battle on Twitch, uh, or I, I streamed it while I was doing this battle, and uh, I talked about how I actually really love this map. I don't remember this map um, from when I played this game as a kid, but I like it. It's got a good mix of uh, terrain. But that is the end of our battle, as we have obtained our historic result. The Kiev and Rus are victorious, and uh, well, there you go. So I will see you guys on a future battlefield, and thanks for watching.